Hi, my name is Melissa Wong, and I am an environmental epidemiologist at the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. My colleagues and I recently published a paper on New York City's restaurant letter grade program in the American Journal of Public Health. I'm here to tell you about what we learned. To start, I'll give you a little background on restaurants and food safety in New York City. When I say restaurant, I'm talking about establishments that serve food to the public, including eateries, coffee shops, bars, permanent concession stands, nightclubs, and bakeries. There are about 24,000 restaurants operating in New York City. Most are in Manhattan, and about one in every 10 is a national chain. We define national chain as having 15 or more locations throughout the country. Nearly one-third of New York City's restaurants are sit-down or waiter service. The New York City Health Department inspects restaurants for proper food handling practices and hygienic conditions. We make sure restaurants are following food safety and hygiene rules set out by the New York City Health Code, which is based on the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Model Food Code. The rules are vital for preventing foodborne illness. To measure how well each restaurant follows the rules, trained health department inspectors conduct detailed inspections. Violations are cited when a restaurant is not following a rule. The point value for each violation is based on the threat the condition poses to public health and the extent of the condition. The worse the problem and the more severe it is, the higher the point value. In July 2010, the Health Department launched the Restaurant Letter Grade Program to allow the public easy access to inspection results. Here's how grading works. Each restaurant receives an initial inspection, which is a full inspection of its facility and operations. If the restaurant scores less than 14 points, remember a lower score is better. It receives an A grade and pays no fines. The next inspection is in 11 to 13 months. But if a restaurant scores 14 or more points on the initial inspection, it receives a reinspection about one month later. The reinspection is another full inspection. It's a chance to improve on the initial score. If the reinspection score is less than 14 points, meaning that the restaurant improved from its initial score, the restaurant receives an A grade and pays no fines. The next inspection is in three to six months, depending on the initial inspection score. If a restaurant scores 14 to 27 points on its reinspection, it receives a B grade card and a grade pending card. The restaurant can post either card while the owner has a chance to contest the violations in an administrative tribunal. The next inspection is in three to six months, depending on the initial inspection score. If a restaurant scores 28 or more points on its reinspection, it must post either a C grade or grade pending card while the owner has a chance to contest the violations. If the violations are upheld at an administrative hearing, a fine is imposed. The next inspection is in three to five months. An imminent public health hazard that cannot be immediately corrected will result in closure of the restaurant until the problem is fixed. During an initial or reinspection, the inspector checks all areas of the restaurant. I'm going to show some examples of violations observed during actual inspections. Inspectors are looking to make sure facilities are properly designed. In this case, a sink used to clean dishes should not be located in the bathroom because it is unsanitary. Sinks should also function properly. This sink has three compartments, but a closer look shows that the sink faucet only reaches one compartment of the three-compartment sink. If the faucet cannot reach each compartment, then it cannot effectively wash, rinse, and sanitize dishes or pots and the largest pot in the kitchen should fit in the sink so that it can be properly cleaned and sanitized. That wasn't the case here. Inspectors also check the plumbing. In this example, the bucket is not a proper drainage system. It is unsanitary and introduces the risk of overflow and pest growth. Inspectors determine if food is stored properly so that it is protected from contamination. In this example, storing food in freezer units on the sidewalk is unsafe. The food is at risk of contamination. Here, these bags of onions should not be stored outside. Any food stored outside is considered at risk for contamination. In this extreme example, we see potentially hazardous food stored in a bedroom. No restaurant food should be stored in a bedroom. In fact, a bedroom should not be present in a restaurant at all. 
In this example, raw meat should not be stored above raw vegetables. Food should be protected from potential cross-contamination. Food should also be cooled properly and protected from contamination. In this example, the ducks are being cooled in an exposed outdoor space. In the outdoors, the ducks are at risk of contamination and are being improperly cooled. A correct way to cool is in the refrigerator or freezer to minimize the growth of microorganisms that can cause foodborne illness. Inspectors also check whether the overall facility is properly maintained. In this example, there are holes in the ceiling. Sealing holes and cracks are important because roaches and other pests can enter through them. Although pests are not considered a direct cause of foodborne illness, their presence is indicative of unsanitary conditions. A pest problem can be less severe with one or two roaches as we see in this picture, or it can be more severe with many roaches. Pests can be found in almost any area of the restaurant, including in stored food. Here we see rat droppings and food seasoning. In some cases, inspectors find dead mice or rats. Overall, we've seen a lot of improvement in restaurant hygiene. These two maps show the increase in egg grades by neighborhood from 2011 to 2014. By 2014, over 80% of restaurants in nearly every neighborhood were earning egg grades. Looking at specific violations before and after the grading program was launched, we found fewer restaurants were cited for having no food safety certified manager on site, improper worker hygiene, evidence of pests, improper storage of an in-use utensil, for example, an ice cream scoop in still water, and inadequate hand washing stations, those with no running water, soap, or paper towels. We also identified areas needing improvement. For example, we saw increases in violations for improper cold holding and inadequate protection of food. We saw little evidence of change in improper hot holding violations. In addition to tracking inspection results, we were interested in what the public thought about grading. So we conducted a telephone survey of more than 500 New Yorkers chosen at random a year and a half after the program began. We found that New Yorkers overwhelmingly support the program and consider grades when deciding where to eat. Over three quarters of New Yorkers feel more confident when eating in an A-grade establishment, and an overwhelming majority approve of more frequent inspections of restaurants that do not earn an A-grade. By enabling the public to vote with their feet, based on knowledge of sanitary conditions in restaurants, restaurants have been motivated to improve sanitary conditions and practices. The Health Department has further enabled public access to restaurant letter grades through a free mobile app called ABC Eats. It's available for Apple and Android devices. Diners can search restaurants on the go by name, neighborhood, or cuisine type, and they can filter by grade. For more information, please visit the Health Department's website or its Environment and Health Data Portal. Thank you for learning more about the New York City Restaurant Letter Grade Program. We would like to acknowledge the Bureau of Environmental Surveillance and Policy and the Bureau of Food Safety and Community Sanitation for their contributions on this project. The survey work was conducted by Baruch College Survey Research, and the program evaluation was supported by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Environmental Health Specialist Network.